Making highlight reel plays, but that really wasn't the case in game one of the LNB Pro A Finals. He struggled big time and then was called out for it with more on what's on instant replay tonight. Here's Larry Ramirez. Welcome to living life under the microscope. I know, right? He better get used to it if he's going to be the number one pick in the NBA. So looking to lead his team to the French Championship before coming to the United States, Victor Wimanyama had a horrible game drawing criticism from an NBA analyst coming up tonight on instant replay. He finished three of eight from the field, 0 of one from deep, and two of two from the foul line. What were your takeaways from Wemby's performance today, KP? I have a single takeaway because he seemed like he disappeared a lot. That's NBA draft analyst Kristen P calling out 19-year-old French phenom Victor Wimanyama. Top seed in Monaco dominated Wemby's team on the glass and from beyond the arc. This best of five series could be over quickly if Wemby and his Mets 92 don't respond in game two. Jokic looking, goes back to Murray. Vincent in pursuit. Step back, Murray. Got it. Miami Heat will try to fight off elimination in Game 5 of the NBA Finals tomorrow night. It won't be easy with how well Denver's dynamic duo of Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray are playing as both are averaging a double-double in this series. And now the 3-1 pitch. Trout pulls it. Right field on the line, and it drops in front of Campbell. Yesterday, Reagan High School grad Porter Brown helped the Texas Longhorns win game one of the Stanford Super Regional. And tonight, they're looking to win game two and punch their ticket to the College World Series. Plus, we've got SAFC, Major League Baseball, mission skipper Luke Montz, and a MacArthur tennis player. She has a heart of gold. That and much more coming up on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. Lots of love for lots of sports. Yep. Thanks, Larry. We'll see you in just a bit. Coming up in the next half hour of the night beat, driving into lower Manhattan is about to get expensive. We'll break down the program that's about to go into effect there. And indicted for a second time. But what does the public think about the charges former President Donald Trump is are facing? We will tell you what a new ABC poll is revealing. We often report on vacant house fires, but this two weeks ago was anything but ordinary. The flames damaged the back of this house, which happens to be historic. Yeah, as you saw there, there is a Texas historical marker out front describing how the house on North Flores played a pivotal role in the Mexican Revolution. Jesse Degollado tells us the fire is also a troubling reminder of how many more vacant historic structures there are in a city as old as San Antonio. Kind of reminds me of a horror movie. Over a century old, the once stately mansion stands vacant, encircled by weeds. Inside, its chandeliers no longer aglow. The delicate curtains now float in the wind. Yet the Texas historical marker out front tells a much different story. Influential compatriots of the future president of Mexico, Venustiano Carranza, met at his niece's home, talking strategy in waging the Mexican Revolution. So if these old walls could talk... They probably heard a lot of uh, secrets. <laughs> but to see it now, he says... This is the only building we have left connected to that history. Executive Director Vincent Michael of the San Antonio Conservation Society and its president, Kathy Rhodes, came to see for themselves what a recent fire did to the back of the house, where it said some of the unsheltered had found refuge. It's demolition by neglect is what, what we call it. Breaks my heart. I'm told there's a real concern that the same fate could await the many other vacant historic structures in San Antonio. How many? An estimated 275 historic homes and buildings that are vacant from one end of San Antonio to the other. It's our history, and San Antonio prides itself on its history. It's a big concern because um, obviously once a property is, is gone, it's gone. But protecting properties like this one? It's difficult. Legally, that's the problem. Although the San Antonio Fire Department doesn't track the number of vacant historic structure fires, the Conservation Society believes there are about 10 a year. Unfortunately, it happens all too often. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. Checking news around America, two people are dead after a plane crash just outside of Phoenix. The FAA says the single-engine plane crashed after taking off from Mesa as part of a three-plane convoy. Right now, authorities haven't released any details regarding the victims or where that group was headed. A full report is expected in the coming weeks. 
A hero until the end. We're learning more about a New Jersey father who drowned while trying to save his daughter. A spokesperson for the New York City Fire Department now says Mark Batista was a member of the force. He was a 15 year veteran serving as a firefighter and EMT. His daughter was drowning along the Jersey Shore Friday morning and he tried to save her but ended up drowning himself. First responders were able to save his daughter. The FDNY spokesperson said the entire department is heartbroken, calling Batista a dedicated public servant. People planning to drive into lower Manhattan might have to start paying to do so. A landmark program that will charge cars entering the island is set to move forward. The toll is called congestion pricing and would be the first of its kind in the U.S. More than 700,000 vehicles drive into lower Manhattan every day, making it one of the busiest areas in the world. The plan is expected to be federally approved and will officially go into effect next spring. No official price yet has been finalized. A new poll suggests Americans see a security risk in former President Trump's alleged actions that led to his recent federal indictment. The former president is now facing 37 criminal counts, including willful retention of classified documents. An ABC News poll found 61 percent of Americans say the federal charges Trump faces are very or somewhat serious. Trump is expected to be arraigned in Miami on Tuesday. All right, let's go back outside with live cam here tonight. Still warm, still humid, and those are two words that you are going to hear a lot of us saying over the next several days. The heat and humidity definitely here to stay, especially as we see high pressure take back over our weather pattern. Let's take a look at the highs for today. For context, our average high is 92 degrees. Again, we hit 98 here in San Antonio, triple digits in Pleasanton, that 100 degree mark. Same out west in Del Rio, Catula checking in at 105. Of course, when you factored in the moisture, it felt even higher hotter than that. We are still in the 80s here in San Antonio, just one degree shy of 90 over at Stinson. And as we continue on into the upcoming work week, yes, temperatures are expected to warm even more so than what we saw this weekend. So we'll get you another look at that, plus some interesting temperature stats coming up in just a few, Tim. All right, thank you, Mia. There is a frog survey underway right now here in South Texas. It is a three week habitat surface survey to find out just how many species of frogs are at Natural Bridge Caverns. And they're going to collect data for the preservation of all those small creatures. Yep, the night team's RJ Marquez and photojournalist Gavin Nesbitt went into the waters at a family ranch to find what's croaking in the middle of the night. There's grass in the water and they're calling to other frogs breeding. It's frog mating season and local biologist Jeremiah McKinney is on a mission to find out how many species of frogs and toads are at Natural Bridge Caverns. Every now and then you'll hear a deeper croak. That's a leopard frog. So leopard frogs are starting to call too. We make our way through muddy waters and spot a leopard frog, a cricket frog, and the most common toad in the state, the Gulf Coast toad. So here's a toad. So you can, you know, you can, you can see how his skin is, is a lot more, more rough than, than the, the frogs have been that we found. So we've been wading through one of the ponds here at the Weiss Family Ranch at Natural Bridge Caverns and we came across this guy right here. This is a green tree frog. Now he's just one of the many native frog species in this area and one of the ways that they're identifying these frogs is by all the sounds they're making. Go ahead and take a listen. The recent rain is helping the population, but things like the drought and urbanization remain a threat, especially in Kamal County, one of the fastest growing counties in the country. It's important to preserve those species just for the ecological benefit of it, but it's also important for the people that live in those areas. You can really tell how healthy or unhealthy an ecosystem is by a lack thereof or in a species abundance of of amphibians. And possibly the biggest threat, other predators in the wild. We spot a green tree frog fighting for its life after being caught by a snake. Oh, this is amazing. Circle of life right there. I highly doubt that snake can pull that one off, to be honest. Against all odds, the green tree frog escapes. And when it's all said and done, we find five different frog species singing into the night. So far, we've documented seven different species of frogs and toads, and you know, there's potential to get up to, I think, 12. Reporting from Natural Bridge Caverns, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News.
That story was great till it wasn't. Yeah, Tim doesn't like snakes. <laughs> All right, still to come on the night beat, begging for bail. A Utah mother accused of killing her husband now asking to be set free as she awaits trial. The technicality she and her legal team are citing. What's next? Plus, paying up for playing a part. The state of New Mexico getting millions after they say drug stores inside state lines ignored some red flags, what they did and how much money is being rewarded. A Utah mother who wrote a book on grief after her husband died last year is now set to appear in court tomorrow. Yeah, after promoting her book for months, she was eventually charged with her husband's murder. ABC's Zareen Shaw tells us why she's asking to be released on bond. Corey Richens, who has been charged with the murder of her husband, is now pleading to be released on bond. Prosecutors say the 33-year-old poisoned her husband, Eric, last year by sneaking fentanyl inside a Moscow mule. Investigators say Corey bought the fentanyl from a drug dealer. But according to court documents that Corey's attorneys filed on Friday, they argue the key witness to the alleged drug deal gave conflicting information about the fentanyl purchase. They also argue that friends had said just weeks before Eric's passing, they had never seen Eric and Corey happier. Corey's attorney say not a single text message or other document was turned over to support the allegation that Eric ever believed Corey attempted to poison him. This motion allows uh, the public and the media to read an alternative version of what took place. They dispute a lot of the allegations that the prosecutors have put forth thus far. The Utah mom of three wrote a children's book about grief after her husband died. I kind of wrote this book on the different emotions and grieving processes that we've experienced last year. Just a few weeks before he died, court documents from prosecutors say Eric confided in a friend that he thought his wife was attempting to kill him when he got sick after a Valentine's Day meal. Prosecutors also previously argued that Corey applied for nearly $2 million in life insurance policies without her husband's knowledge, a quarter million dollars in home equity, and a substantial amount in credit cards. But the defense saying the money was from shared accounts. I think with a, a list of allegations this long in front of a judge, uh, she's going to remain behind the bars pending her trial date. And we'll see if that happens. Corey's detention hearing takes place tomorrow and all eyes will be on the judge and if he considers letting Corey out on bail. Zoreen Shop, ABC News, Los Angeles. Still to come on the night beat, not paying the bill. Twitter owes another tech giant some big bucks. Why some are saying they probably aren't going to pay up. That's next. Well, the state of New Mexico has reached a half a billion dollar settlement with Walgreens over its role in the opioid epidemic. New Mexico says Walgreens failed to red flag prescriptions that were not needed for medical use and continued to refill red flag prescriptions. Albertson, CVS, Kroger and Walmart have also paid nearly 300 million in settlement money to their to the state for their roles there. New Mexico state officials say settlement money will be used to fight opioid addiction. Twitter is apparently in a bit of a dispute over its Google Cloud bill. That's according to tech website Platformer. Twitter's contract for Google Cloud is set to renew this month, but it's been reported that Musk and Twitter have tried to renegotiate the price since March. Since Musk bought the social media giant, he's cut costs dramatically across the board, and it's rumored to have ordered cuts on infrastructure like cloud service costs. Twitter has not commented yet on the pending bill. So me and I always accidentally twin with our with our dress colors. I'm beginning to think that you guys plan it. We so I planned this because I wanted cooler temperatures. Yes. And then she wore like pink, which is all the hot temperatures. So I knew what was coming. Yeah. Apparently had to match the graphics, I guess. She's just trying that to color pink this time of year is never good on not good. It's not good. You're right. Yeah, I, I wish we could go more with the green. Come keep on. some rain going around here. Keep temperatures down just a little bit. But yeah, I think we're going to have to go with the pink at least for this. I week. tried. You did. Good job, Courtney. Um, I will say, let's take a look at the uh, hottest days that we've seen so far this year. OK, so today we got up to 98. 
38 degrees. That ties Friday for the hottest temperature that we've recorded so far in 2023 here in San Antonio. Yesterday we got up to 96, so that then follows in the 94 of May 5th and 93, which is what we found on April 15th. Now here's an interesting stat for you. By this time last year, we already had found 42 days where the thermometer was able to climb to at least 90 degrees or hotter. The hottest temperature that we had recorded thus far was already 104 degrees. This year, doing a bit better. Today marked the 12th 90 degree plus day that we found here in San Antonio, and the hottest so far is 98, which is what we saw earlier this afternoon. Now into tomorrow, that number is going to climb to 13, and then we'll continue to see that grow throughout the remainder of the week. So we're going to start off in the muggy mid to upper 70s. Again, like this morning, I think some morning cloud cover is going to be possible, but then as we head into the lunchtime hour and especially into the early afternoon, that's when we're going to start to see some more sunshine take back over 86 by 11 a.m. 95 already by 2 p.m. And then we've got daytime highs pointed in the upper 90s here in San Antonio tomorrow afternoon around 98 to 99. Check out our far southwestern counties, though. I do think we will see some triple digits out across the Winter Garden area tomorrow. Forecast high of about 100 in Hondo, 103 possible in Eagle Pass, stretching up to Del Rio. Slightly cooler the farther east you go, 97 in Gonzales. But when we fade on the forecast heat index value, again, what it feels like when you factor in all of the humidity in the air, it is going to feel like the triple digits for pretty much everybody across South Central Texas tomorrow afternoon here in San Antonio in between about 102 to 107 and then even hotter the farther south and west that you go. So just get ready for it because yes, those hot temperatures are here to stay throughout the remainder of the week. So here's the big picture. What we're monitoring right now across the lower 48, there's some severe weather that's actually been impacting the Metroplex near DFW throughout the evening. Another round of severe weather across the deep south near Mississippi, stretching over to Alabama and even northern Georgia. And another round near the Texas Panhandle. Now again, our rain chances are next to nothing over the next several days because of this big blue H high pressure anchored off to our southwest. That's going to move farther up to the northeast here over the next several days. It'll be the main drive of our weather pattern and again it deflects all of that rain making energy off to our north which is unfortunate because you know we've seen some decent rain over the past several weeks which held those temperatures at bay just a little bit more because we are expecting to see more sunshine though with that high pressure system taking over yes triple digits are expected all the way into Father's Day weekend and I put the records on there in days where we will be pretty close to that so yes near record heat at times so just stay hydrated heat safety and you'll probably get tired of us saying that a lot this week but it is really important to think about guys let's just not make a run at the 100 degree day record again like we did last yeah, year be mm -hmm. nice all right thanks mia all right, for the fourth straight weekend, there is a new number one at the box office, a recap of the summer's newest hit movie in Hollywood, coming up. Sucked the life right out of them. The Boogeyman fell to fifth place on ticket sales of $6.9 million. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 took in $7 million to stay in fourth place. The Little Mermaid sank one spot to third place, earning $22.8 million. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter Files. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse lost the top spot, but $55.4 million gave the animated sequel a 10-day total of $225 million. Transformers Rise of the Beast is the new king of the box office jungle, opening with $60.5 million, a considerably higher debut than the last two films in the franchise. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. The TCU baseball team swept Indiana State to advance to the College World Series for the sixth time in program history. 
weekend. Once again, San Antonio FC scored quickly, but they could not protect the lead. For more on what's on Instant Replay, let's check in with Larry. Yeah, that's two matches in a row yeah. for San Antonio FC, and they're clearly not happy about it. The good thing is San Antonio FC's unbeaten streak at home is still alive at 26 straight, coming up tonight on Instant Replay. Fernandez sends it towards the top of the six. On the back. Mitchell Tainer got SAFC off to another strong start in the fourth minute, but the mentality monsters had to settle for a 2-2 draw last night at home with El Paso Locomotive, and Mitch has taken the blame for one of those goals allowed. Um, well, I started all the way back in February, starting with creating flyers and ways to sign up for this. So I started a Google form, sent it out to the coaches, and um, then we started with logos and getting the t-shirts orders in, and then I started by like asking people around my community like um, to see if they could sponsor and see if they'd be interested in helping out. MacArthur High School tennis player Riley Marfiotto is paying it forward by helping teach the sport she loves for free. She's number one in her class and one awesome young lady. Wait until you hear the emotion her coach displays when asked about her. It's a pretty special hearing him, that's for sure. Wimby struggled in game one of the LNB Pro A Finals and will the Nuggets close out the Heat in game five of the NBA Finals tomorrow night? That is our poll question tonight. That and much more coming up right after the night beat. Lots to talk about. We'll see in just a bit, Larry. Yep. He messed up for one game. Come on. <laughs> we'll be right back.